Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. My name is Nathaniel Dodson and today we're going to take a look at creating this double exposure effect. Not your traditional photo on photo double exposure effect, but rather a double exposure with a piece of type that we've created in Adobe Photoshop. Now, of course, you could use this on a photo, uh, but we're going to do it with some type today, but the techniques remain the same. You can kind of use it however you want. Now, if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss any new Photoshop tutorials, past, present, or most importantly, future. And also, if you could leave a comment down below with a timestamp of a part of this video that you found interesting or helpful or maybe had a little tidbit or tip that you thought was pretty cool, it helps me create better video tutorials that you guys enjoy more and more and more in the future. Thank you so much, and let's go ahead and get this thing started. Okay, well, here we are in Photoshop. Let's go File, New to create a new document. And I want to go ahead and create a 3,000 pixel by 3,000 pixel document. I've got a resolution of 72 pixels per inch, and I'm going to create. The first thing I want to do here is create a new solid color layer. So hit that little half black, half white circle, go solid color. And the color that I want here for my color picker is uh, F6FDED. So it's a very, very light, I guess sort of greenish, in between green and yellow maybe, but very light, very desaturated. Hit OK. And then we're going to go ahead and grab our text tool, and I'm going to flip my foreground and background colors using little flip-flop arrows there. I'm using a font called Sonder Sands. So this guy right here, I believe it's a free font. It's either Typekit or maybe something from FontSquirrel.com. Either way, you should be able to Google it and find it. Like I said, pretty sure it's free. Sonder Sands is the font. I'm going with black as the weight and 1,200 points here in size. I think actually I'm going to bump that up to about 2,000. I'm going to click once here and I'm going to type out the number 9 and uh, I'm going to commit that change. Yeah, I do want to make it a little bit larger. So I'm going to open my character panel. I'm going to say, hey, let's try like 2,000 points for this. And you can see what happens. Photoshop says, nope. Biggest you can go is 1296. Uh, so we just inserted that for you. So I'm going to say, okay, funny, funny Photoshop. We're going to go edit. We're going to say free transform. And we're simply going to scale this up larger. And I'm going to commit that change. And now we're at 1800 points. I'm going to hit command or control T again. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's go to about, we want that to be about 2000 points. There we go. 2057 points. What'd you say about 1296? That's kind of what I thought. All right, let's drag this to about the middle of our document, something about right there. And uh, we'll change and, and, and move this around in just a little bit. I'm going to jump out here to my finder and I have this photo. It's a free stock photo from unsplash.com that we're going to use. I got a link to it up in the bio or down in the bio to this video. You can go and grab it and follow along. I'm going to drag this into Photoshop here. And before I commit the change, I'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit. And I want to place this basically so the, the little dash in the road kind of follows the stem of the nine, something like that. I might actually make it a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to scale this up a little bit. Uh, maybe something like that. Maybe I'll nudge it, nudge it with my arrow keys a little bit. Something sort of like that's cool. Maybe we can make that work. Eh, yeah, something sort of like that. Again, I'm just watching the, the dash. I kind of want it to follow. I want this tree to be sticking out of the top of my nine, a little bit of the mountain and a little bit of the hillside. I think this will work for us. Let's commit the change, boost the opacity back to 100%. So the key here with a good uh, double exposure, at least generally, is you really want part of your image to be able to be blown away. And in this case, that's the sky. We want to blow out the sky so we can easily mask it away and hide it. We're going to begin this process by opening our adjustments panel and adding a levels adjustment layer. I'm going to crush my adjustments panel here, but leave it open. And what I want to do here is in my RGB, my inputs, I want to change them. So I'm going to change this to about... I don't know, 0.8, just open up and make the darker parts of the image a little darker. But then the brights over here, I'm going to boost this to like 2, I don't know, let's go about 225. You can see the sky looks almost solid white already. Now I want to take this levels adjustment layer and clip it to the image beneath using the hotkey command option G. That is control alt and the letter G for those of us on the PC. Then I'm going to add a selective color adjustment layer, this sort of triangle looking layer. That's a selective color adjustment layer. Also clip this to the stack. Command option, again, control alt and the letter G. And what I want to do is find blacks from my colors drop down menu. And I want to just knock cyan down to like negative 10. I want to knock magenta down to negative 10. That's pushing some green into it. I want to knock yellow down to like negative 15. And black, I want to knock down to like five. So just fade, add some blue to the shadows, just change the toning of the image a little bit. You can see before and after. We're just changing kind of the really darkest parts of our photo. 
All right, let's select our image that's being affected by these two adjustment layers, set it to the blend mode of multiply, which is going to knock away the brightest parts of the photo and just leave the tree. Now you can see the nine appears above it as well. Don't worry about that because we're going to select the nine and we're just going to hide that layer. We're going to be using that in just a second here. So hold down your command or control key, hover over the letter T and click. That's going to load our number nine as a selection. Now we'll select our photo and we're going to go layer, layer mask, reveal selection. So it's going to use that number nine as a selection for us. We can see it's looking good, looking just like we want it to. Now, the next thing we want to do is begin bringing back parts of the image that we want to keep or parts of the image that we want to bring back and have part of our double exposure effect. We're going to do that by grabbing the brush tool here and uh, I'm going to open up my brushes panel. I'm going to just make the size of my brush quite a bit larger, maybe bring it up to like 150, 160, and I want it to be very soft. So hardness set to zero, opacity flow 100%, we're looking good. I'm painting with the color white, you can see right there, and I have the mask selected, see the white tick marks around the mask, that means the mask is selected, and we'll begin painting white here to bring this tree back into play, and you can see it's like we can't even see the sky, right? The tree is just popping out of the top of the nine. I want to see some of the hillside as well, but you can see it just looks really kind of wonky because you go from this really soft edge to the really hard edge nine it looks really bad looks really fake doesn't look organic or natural at all we're going to tackle that in a second let me just undo that a little bit i'm just going to add a little bit of a soft edge there the other thing is i want to bring this mountain back that's that was looking kind of cool over there um, again we got the same issue where it's just really soft edge really hard edge nine looking really bad I am going to flippy flop my colors to get black as my foreground color. I'm going to paint away some of this mountain that I don't really want to be there. And I'm going to show you how we're going to tackle this issue. I have a free brush pack that is linked in the bio of this video. It is trees, just a couple trees. It's like four trees. And you can import that brush into Photoshop. See right here, it's this tree master pack sample. Use the flyout menu here and just say import brushes. Go to where you save the file on your hard drive, bring it in here. There's some great little trees here and we can use these to really build out our effect. I'm gonna begin with sample brush number two and I'm gonna downsize my brush to, I don't know, five or 600. Uh, pixels or so, uh, whatever we can get, about 500. And eh, it probably needs to be a little bigger. Let's go 650, something like that. That's probably good. What we want to do now is zoom in and we just want to use the edges of the, the leafy part of the tree. I want to paint with white. And I want to use that to kind of naturally make my, make my edges look very organic. So I'm going to go in and just begin painting just saying, you know what, I want some of this back. I want to paint with black, so I'll hit the letter X to flip my foreground and background color, and I can cut some of that away and make it look a little bit less um, hillside-y, right? A little bit more tree-ish. So I'm going to cut that away, cut that away, cut that away, and then I'm going to flip back to white, and I'm going to paint from the other side, make it a little bit smaller here. I'm going to paint from this side and just paint this back in and just kind of make it look like there's a tree coming out of this side of the nine, right? So you can see how it much more naturally now just fades right into the nine down here. Don't worry about these little trunky stuff sticking out down here. I'll show you how we'll get rid of that in a little bit. One thing you can do is right click and rotate the direction of the brush as well. So we can sort of tip the tree over and we can paint a little bit like this to really help just blend that together just like it should. And we'll do the same exact thing here with the side of the mountain. This up here is still kind of bugging me. So let's rotate our brush the other way. Let's rotate it up this way. And let's just whoop, undo that, flip our foreground and background colors using a little flippy flop arrow, and let's paint black right in there to really just get rid of some of that. It's just not looking how I want it to look. And we can always add it back in just a moment. Whoop, undo, I accidentally held down and dragged away. I'm gonna click on here, rotate my brush back around, just something kind of like that. And I'm gonna hit the letter X to flip my foreground and background color. And I'm just gonna paint a little bit here just to add a little bit of tree, bushy type stuff popping out of the side of the nine. Now we have this a little bit sticking through here. What will we do? Well, we'll command or control click on the number nine and we will simply go select, inverse the selection. So now we've selected everything outside of the nine. Right click real quick and just grab uh, one of your other brushes. So we can just go with like 60 hard mechanical and make sure we're painting with the color black and just paint black over those little bits hanging out down there. Hit command or control D to deselect. Perfect edge meetup, looking very organic and natural. Let's do the same thing over here to the mountain. And you might think it's going to look weird, but it actually looks pretty decent. I'm going to grab a different tree. Let's go with this tree. Let's again set it to about 600 pixels in size. Maybe that's a little bit too much, but we'll see. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And uh, make sure we flip our foreground and background color, hitting the letter X. 
and just begin painting out the mountain over this way. And we're just going to make it look as natural as we can. I hit the letter X. I'm painting some of this away, just kind of making it blend back into itself, just to kind of make it look as natural as possible and meet up with the number nine as much as we can. Um, and just, I don't know, make, just make it blend. You kind of, you kind of know how it's supposed to look when you see it. Something like that looks cool. It still looks like we have a little bit of an overhang here. So I'm going to paint with black, make this brush maybe nice and small and get in there and just manually blend that one little area. Just kind of something like that, just to make it look good. And like, it's like, it meets up perfectly. Kind of like that. I may actually come over here and add a little bit more yellow or yeah, some of the yellow leaves coming through something, eh, maybe a little bit like that. Maybe I'll paint a little bit of a, a little bit of it away. Something sort of like that. It just looks kind of a little too straight up and down right here, doesn't it? Make this a little bit bigger here. Paint a little bit. Push push it out as though there's a bush shooting out. Kind of like that. I like that. So you can really spend a lot of time tweaking and playing with this, making it look exactly how you want it to look. I'm going to take away a little of the top of the mountain there. It's just looking a little too, too heavy for my taste. And now that we have our general shape set, we're going to select the top layer and use the hotkey command shift option and the letter E. Now that is control shift alt and the letter E for those of you on the PC. And I'm going to call this layer HP for high pass. We're going to go image adjustments and say desaturate. And then we're going to say filter other high pass. And I'm just going to give this a little two pixel high pass sharpening or high pass effect, really, we're going to use it as sharpening by setting this layer to overlay. And then I'm going to hit Command or Control J to duplicate that layer, but I'm going to set it to soft light instead of overlay. Now we're going to begin our color treatment. This is going to begin with a curves adjustment layer right here globally over everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce my white point, knock it down a bit, and I'm going to boost my black point up a little bit. And then I'm going to infuse a little like mid-tone contrast just something kind of, sort of like that. So we can see there's before, there's after. Then I'm going to come over here to my red channel. I'm going to push a little bit of red into like the mids and highs. And I'm going to pull cyan into the very darkest parts of the image. So something kind of like that will work for us. I'm going to select my channel drop down and choose the blue channel. Ignore the green channel for now. I'm going to pull down on the white point here to add yellow to the brightest parts of the image. And I'm going to pull up on the blue down here. Uh, which is the blues in the darkest parts of the image. So we're going to add even more blue to the dark parts of our image. I'm going to close my properties panel. I'm going to add a color lookup table. It's this icon right here. It's a really, really cool adjustment layer. We're going to load a 3D LUT, and we're going to use the Drop Blues 3D LUT. You can see it neutralizes a lot of the blues in the shadow and gives us just a really softening uh, effect to the contrast overall. Then we're going to add another selective color adjustment layer, this time to everything. Here again, we're going to work in the blacks, the colors, and I'm going to go negative two on cyan. That pushes a little bit of red into there. Red's the opposite of cyan. For magenta, I'm going to push a little bit of magenta into the shadowy parts of the image. And for yellow, the opposite of yellow is blue. So I'm going to push just a kiss of blue back into the darker parts of the image. Because remember, we just added that drop blue, which got rid of a lot of the blues and the shadows, but used it for uh, the way that LUT works with contrast. I still like the blue in the shadow, so we're adding a little bit of it back here. And uh, then I'm going to flatten out the shadows a lot here. I'm going to go maybe like negative... I don't know, 15, maybe like negative 10. I'm going to go with like negative 10, see how that looks. If I need to add some more contrast, I will later, but that's looking a little heavy. I might even come back here to my curves, go back to the red. There's a little bit too much red overall in here. So I'll just lighten up on the red a little bit. Select my top layer, add a levels adjustment layer now, and we're going to try to darken up the image just a little bit. So I'm going to go like, I don't know, 0 0.9 for my middle point and uh, boost the blacks a little bit here. Try to push it to maybe like, I don't know, 15 or 20, something right around there. Adds a little bit of richness to the color and overall effect of our image. And at this point, we can select our, uh, our forest image and all the way up to the HP images because those are our sharpening. And we could move this around if we wanted. I don't want to do that. I think we're good where we are. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to name this layer shadow. This is going to be beneath our nine and I'm going to drag out an ellipse. I'm going to hold down the shift key, drag out an ellipse. I don't know, right about that big. And I'm going to fill it with black option delete. That's alt backspace on the PC. Hit command or control D to deselect. It might look slightly purpley or something like that. That's just because of all these color layers we've added up above here. Don't worry about that. And here for the shadow, uh, we just need to blur it a little bit. So let's go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. We're going to go with like a 30 pixel Gaussian blur. And I also want to give it a motion blur. Filter, blur, motion blur. 
This is perfect. Angle of zero, straight across. Distance of 500. It gives us this really cool, like, shadowy, bunched up in the middle, but really soft on the edges kind of effect. Hit OK. And now we're going to hit Command or Control T. Move this down into place beneath the 9. We need to go ahead and make this a little smaller. So hold down Shift and Option. Let's Shift and Alt on the PC. And we're just going to crunch this down, maybe something like that. Put it here beneath the 9 where it looks like it should go. Maybe what I'll do is move it over and I'll just stretch it out a little bit. Because of the new uh, tools in Photoshop, I have to hold down Shift to not constrain proportions. you got to figure out what, what version of Photoshop you're in and whether or not you have to hold Shift or not. I'm going to commit that change. And the shadow looks a little funky because it needs to be blurred one more time. Filter, blur, and another 30 pixel Gaussian blur needs to be dropped on it. Hit OK. And look at that. Is that not a beautiful little shadow? You can reduce the opacity a little bit if you like. Maybe I'll take it down to about 80, something like that. Move it down away from the 9 to make it look like the 9's floating a little higher. And the very last thing I want to do is just darken up the bottom of the 9 a little bit. And we're going to do that by command or control clicking on the layer mask here that contains our really intricate mask. Command or control click on that. Make sure your foreground color is set to black. Go all the way up to the top of the layer stack. And we are going to come down here right where we started the tutorial. Instead of adding a solid color layer, we're going to add a gradient layer. And here for the choice of gradient, I'm going with the foreground to transparent option. So you can see here, color to transparent, your foreground color to transparent, hit OK. And the cool thing about the gradient layers is you can adjust them and everything, but you can just click and drag them as well. And I'm going to drag this straight down until we just get a little bit of shadowy darkness down here at the bottom of the nine. Something like that looks good. Hit OK. And then we'll set this layer to the blend mode of overlay. So there's before, there's after. You can see we're just darkening up the bottom part of the nine a little bit. Um, and that pretty much is how I go about creating this effect. It's this really cool flat, low contrasty effect. Maybe I'll take the selective color here and I'll just dim that down a little bit. Uh, the, the color lookup tab table, maybe I'll knock that down a little bit, which will bring back a little bit more of the blues there in the shadows. And you can really go through and play with it at this point and adjust and tweak things, uh, refine them just how you uh, like them. But that is how I go about creating this really cool, simple double exposure effect. And if there's one big takeaway that you get from this tutorial, it is that when you're working with a double exposure, especially with these kind of organic uh, type backgrounds, Really, really, really find yourself some good texture brushes so you don't have these either hard or soft straight edges. They never really look all that great. They're fast and easy to do, but this looks really, really nice. It looks like the trees and the plants are growing right out of this number nine shape. Uh, so that's the one thing I would say really focus on, and you'll get some great double exposures uh, in the future. So there you have it. That's how we create this double exposure effect in Photoshop. All right, so there you have it. That is how we create that simple double exposure effect in Photoshop. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy, if I dare say so myself. Now, if you did complete this tutorial and you really enjoyed it, or even if you just only kind of sort of enjoyed it, but if you completed it, make sure you upload your finished design to Instagram and tag me in the photo. Actually, tag me in it, not just the description, because then it shows up in my tagged images feed, and I can go and show you some love and like and comment on the image. I love to see that. I love when you guys share your artwork and allow me to see what you've created when following these tutorials. It's really super cool to see. Uh, my Instagram is at tutvid, and I'm there all the time. So for creating this double exposure effect in Photoshop using masks and different adjustment layers and everything else we did here in this tutorial, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.